तो आप लोग को डील क्रैक हुआ तो आप लोगों को कितना मिलता है कोई डील क्रैक हो गया तो कितना मिलता तो मुश्किल है फाइव डील्स में Good evening, one and all. On behalf of Homeopathic Medical Association of Telangana, I, Dr. Gautam Ralabandi, Joint Secretary of this association, uh, welcome you all, uh, the audience, both offline and online, for today's oration. Dr. B. K. Kumar Memorial Oration. To start the session, uh, I invite the president of the association, Dr. Gopal Krishna Garu, uh, onto the dais, and uh, general secretary of the association, Dr. Durga Prasad Rao Garu. On to the dais. Now I invite our president, Dr. Gopal Krishna, sir, to address the audience. and 
was associated with the university till the end. He was a very pleasant to spread man. He was a very sympathetic and uh, had a lot of compassion by revealing patients to people around him. He was a very nice man when he reached his last for 27 November 1922. We get more memorial narration. I request Dr. Achikulam from UK to deliver his attention on the perfect management of homeopathy. He can after the introduction of the Good evening, sir. Shall we begin? Provided training to young Indian homeopaths in advanced case study, presented to young homeopaths in chronic disease and how to make constitutional prescription, and clinically verified many underlying remedies, successfully managed COVID patients during the recent pandemic. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank Honorable President. Am I audible? Doctor? Before this, I request our President, Dr. Okay, Gopal Krishna, sir, please address the gathering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
cancer most of the cancers are preventable but the over around 40% of the cancers are not preventable and in regard to in context maybe around 60 to 70% of the cancers are preventable so but though the incidence of cancers in india are relatively less so it's all because of lack of awareness knowledge availability of treatment and early detection so that's why the cancer awareness goes a long way in preventing the cancer and reducing the death rate so we would be immensely benefited if we develop cancer awareness so let us all take part in promoting the awareness programs of cancer so in this context i would congratulate dr atikul alam and request him to go ahead and deliver it hi thank you sir uh, good evening everyone um I'd like to thank uh, Homeopathic Medical Association of Telangana and ICRH, and today's special occasion of Dr. B K Kumar Memorial Oration. I'd like to thank all presidents, secretaries, senior homeopaths, our mentors, everyone, and inviting me to present this topic today. Um, I really, really. appreciate this uh, timely uh, initiative it's not just only for the young homeopaths but also just for a, a, as a refresher for our more experienced practitioner so let me share my screen uh, you are allowed to ask any question um, during the presentation or you could uh, choose to ask a later uh, part of the presentation is my screen visible please um is my screen visible please yes sir it's visible thank you so much so let's begin today's presentation we covering practical cancer management in homeopathy what to expect what is realistic what is not realistic what is our responsibility what we should be aware and so on and so forth so the first slide is really about the uh, cancer formation there are many theories about it so today's chat is not about those theories uh, the epigenetics um, so the genetic profiling and the environmental factors toxins stressor diet everything comes into the play so we'll not spend much time on it today we'll rather focus on our homeopathic um um presentation today so if we look into our one of the most modern repertories um synthesis adonis uh, these are the uh, top and uh, second grade remedies as you can see many of the remedies are familiar to you so the purpose of this slide is to make you aware these are all clinically verified remedies over the uh, century so for example konaya phytolacca um all these medicines we already know from our practices that they have shown some good results so they've been reflected in the latest repertories so let's move on so when we manage cancer we need to be realistic because very unlikely these days um a a well off patient will come to us as a fast goal uh for the first line of cancer management quite often what we get a a patient is returning from the modern medicine either for uh, the pain management or the wound management or post chemotherapy uh, side effects management so and so forth so i have focused on today's conversation uh, begin with the pain management because this is a very practical uh, topic uh, without managing a cancer pain Uh, a patient of a cancer pain we can't really uh, work hand in hand with the oncologist so the first stop is tarantula givensis 
Um, so this is one of the uh, top remedies for uh, cancer when the patient is uh, probably stage three, stage four. So all this burning and stinging pain, hardness, bluish purplish color of the heat of the wound or the cancer ulceration itself, nightly exertion, nightly aggravation and exertion aggravation. So the cancer pain in such a patient is so excruciating as if they would die of the pain. Morphine is not working, painkillers are not working. So we could make a huge difference with uh, tarantula cubensis in this patient. So choice of potency, not less than 200, one M, even 10 M. So next up in the same theme of today's, tonight's topic is euphorbium officinalis. Many of our uh, teachers here already know, mentors know that this is another hallmark remedy for managing acute uh, pain in a cancer patient. So again, the burning pain and again, the heat aggravates is actually um, the, one of the, one of the uh, characteristics, PQRS, you can call it. And of course, it's an opposite modality of arsenic album because it's uh, ameliorates with cold. Again, choice of potency is 200, 1 M, not less than 200. And we should be repeating these medicines quite often in water dose. Can you mute yourself, please? So third stop in uh, managing pain is anthracinum. Again, another pillar of our uh, uh, pain management. Burning is prominent, uh, better by heat, uh, worse from uh, cold. Um, so, so this is not correct. Uh, so the worst from cold, better by heat. So ulceration and is a septic conditions, bed source. Again, the choice of potency is 200, 1M, 10M, anthracinum. Anthracinum has got a lot of uh, analogous mental symptom with natural neo. But in managing pain, we go straight with the modalities, burning pain and ulceration. We use anthracinum quite successfully. So this is the first three medicines I have presented today with the practical application, clinically validation. We have tested this medicine. They really help in advanced cancer patients. The second stop in today's chat is wound management. So quite often, either post-surgery or the advanced ulceration, patient will beg you what they could do because the modern medicine are not doing 100%, so we have an answer here. So our, uh, one of the most favorite remedies, calendula found in the rescue. So again, it's an antiseptic remedy. It, it promotes granulation tissue. Uh, it can have the uh, suppurative action and hemorrhagic action. So it stops the bleeding of a, of a wound and stops the further suppuration process. It could use Q as a uh, external application of 201 m as a potency. So we get to use both. So our next stop in this team is echinacea, echinacea, whichever way you wanna call it, both are correct. So it's a beautiful uh, flower remedy. Again, it's the same antiseptic. We could use this for cleaning and we can also use this internally in potency. So foul smelling discharge is one of the uh, characteristics of this. So choice of potency in echinacea, echinacea, Q6 or 30. So I now enter into another theme uh, of tonight's topic, which is the post -radio radiation and chemotherapy um, aftermath. So quite likely that we'll receive a patient in our clinic who is actually seeing us to stop their uh, like deadly vomiting, uh, they feel so nauseous, weeks, days, nothing is working. So cadmium salt is one of the proven remedies to help these patients. So now we have covered those two pillars. This is the third pillars, post uh, radiation chemo uh, patients coming to us from the modern medicine. So deadly nausea, post chemotherapy, burning in the stomach, the person himself or herself could have stomach CA in the first place. It's a very, very useful medicine and uh, it never will fail you. It's one of the hallmark remedies of 
author Hill Grimmer, uh, Ken student. So it's like our Senegal album, but without the restlessness. And if you get a um, CA a stomach patient, you'll see a lot of black discharges, vomiting. Uh, it's a chilly patient, um, you know, better by eating, better by rest. Um, so all this uh, arsenic and bryonia mixed modality, better by rest is from bryonia and better by eating uh, all these arsenic uh, characteristics, chili, uh, very, very weak, you know, all these things uh, can represent the uh, cadmium salt. So cadmium is another hallmark remedy. Uh, we can use this remedy to actually stop recurrency of uh, stomach CA. So imagine you get a patient who had uh, stomach CA had undergone lots of surgery, and now the doctors suspect that it might be returning even after chemotherapy. And if you get a characteristic symptom of that patient, you could give it a try 30 followed by 200. LMS scale is equally applicable to these remedies because CA patients' vitality is very low. So we should always consider LM, LM potencies as well. So, the fourth stop tonight is the scar tissue formation post radiation, post chemotherapy. So it's, it's a real, real problem. Whoever is managing these patients, they know that uh, the radiation damage, uh, chemotherapeutic damage, the scar tissue forms very, very quickly. And uh, even the surgical procedure cannot remove them. So can you mute yourself, please? Uh, so really post-operative radiation damage cases, so we can think about 3x, 6x potency uh, for those type of patients. But if you get a thiocinaminum patient in chronic stage, not an active CA, but precancerous stage, he could actually go higher. I've got a live patient in my clinic, uh, which I'm going to share the picture in a few minutes. So this medicine uh, compares with uh, our traditional calculator fluor, x-ray, and radium probe. Very, very effective medicine, very useful medicine. So on the left-hand side, what we are seeing a, a chronic keloid patient. So her constitution shows she's actually a thiocinaminum patient. Thiocinaminum is a mixture of natrum mu and carcinosin constitution, as per the Roger Morrison's uh, extensive clinical validation. So I given her, uh, this is before the treatment, I given her 1M. This is a chronic case, but on the right-hand side, this gentleman, uh, he had undergone uh, a, you know, tongue and cheek um, surgery because of the CA in buccal cavity, obviously part of his tongue is gone. They applied extensive uh, radiation. So he consulted me last month whether homeopathy could do something about it. And yes, I can confirm you, all the scar tissue is actually reconstructed. They've taken off the uh, cell from uh, his bicep and reconstructed that. So the post-reconstruction and post-radiation, um, what happened is that all that tissues formed as a scar. So he can't eat properly because there is no elasticity, smoothness of this muscle anymore. So someone suggested, oh, we need to inject fat tissue. Others have said, redo the surgery. The oncologist said it's too risky to open it again. So I gave him thiocinaminum alternately with calcareous flow, and he's doing very well. Our fifth stop is a methotrexate. Quite often, you'll find a lot of CA patients coming from exhaustion, anemia. Their bone marrow is gone because of extensive radiation therapy. So methotrexate will come you handy, rescue to this patient. It's a very, very well uh, experimented drug. Uh, it's, a, it's a clinical symptom. As you know, this uh, allopathic medicine, modern medicine was developed for all these purposes. So we can use this in the potency to help with our patients. So it's really, these are the keynotes I verified. So bone marrow depression post chemotherapy, depression of vitality in CA patients, anemia, infections, low platelet count, all this blood profile will show that. So it compares with X-ray, the well-known uh, polycrest. Very, very useful remedy, methotrexate. And you could also get some patients who actually taken 
methotrexate for a long time as an uh, active uh, you know, protocol given by the modern medicine. I've only uh, experimented with 30C, but I believe 200C is also equally effective. So my, my test uh, base was based on 30C. It's an excellent medicine. And if you are really scared of X-ray, because X-ray is a very, very big polycrest, uh, you could actually focus on methotrexate. If that doesn't give good results, you could uh, probably top up with X-ray. Or either way, you could uh, start with uh, methotrexate and try different potencies. It's very, very effective medicine. Now I enter into our traditional materia sections. The first picture is the English goosegrass gallium aparin. I have actually had this medicine clinically verified in 2015. I had a live patient and uh, he had uh, extensive uh, tongue tumor, was bleeding tumor, was going into surgery and this humble goosegrass saved his uh, tongue surgery. So back in the day when I was experimenting with gallium, I didn't have enough data. So the only thing I found those days, the Misha Norland uh, from the UK, he, he was the prover. And the only symptom I could match with the patient at that time was uh, helplessness feeling. The patient was overwhelmed by his life situation, his money, his finance, his family. He was juggling around everything. He was under tremendous amount of stress. So as you can see, synthesis atom is quite rightly recorded gallium as a second grade remedy, verified. It's not only just me, a lot of other practitioners verified it. So everything patient feels as a struggle, patient is also discouraged. You don't need this mental symptom, but I'm just discussing it that I prescribed on the tongue pathology. This is from the complete repertory. As you can see, a lot of mouth um, in all these uh, noto notocytes and all that things are coming. So it's a very, very organopathic type remedy. Um, we should not be why this is coming in like this. Does anyone know why this is forming on my screen? Does anyone know why these annotations are coming, please? Uh -huh. no. Just one second, please. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, I have I have experimented with heart disease. That patient was recovered in, uh, I believe, 10, 15 days. Uh, his tumor was bleeding. Um, materia and repertory doesn't say that it's bleeding ulcer, but I found it's uh, almost like nitric acid type bleed. Very, very bleeding tumor. And right in the middle of his tongue, palate. And it was growing like anything. So I, I given him heart disease. Within a three days, stopped, followed by gargling with Q, and within two weeks, this case was handled. So, gallium aparin is a very, very useful remedy. Do not forget in tongue and mouth cancer. Our next stop in this category, Semparvium tectorum, uh, is not an unknown remedy. So, it's a mouth cavity. So, play this at night, side of the tongue could be ulcerated it could also have squamous cell carcinoma on the top. One of the previous symptoms, if you catch such a patient, leukoplakia patient in the oral cavities could be also a good sign. So you can always use low potency, either as a gargle or consumption. It's also a very proven medicine. Now we enter into glandular upper part of the body, cystus canadensis. It's a wonderful remedy. I had a few patients in my clinic in Bengal and I have uh, tested this remedy quite extensively. So the patient, uh, the first stop is very chilly. If you're really looking for the homeopathic, um, you know, symptomatology, cervical limb nerves could be enlarged, enlarged and it can be a actually metastasis effect from the uh, oral cancer, CA breast or even lung. So swollen glands, it could be hard, uh, so the patient is a little bit allergic to eggs and uh, 
also they may some of them may actually confirm that they are allergic to rubber rubber products as well but these are recently verified symptom by european master homeopaths you can take them or you cannot take them it depends on you but always the prescription is the chilliness and the local pathology will dominate because all of them are organopathics i've used 30 c i have used 200 c but you can use lm scale as well at lower frequencies. so the the glandular invasion you're looking at something similar to that it will not be the tubercular gland like mated gland it will be not the hard gland so this is my live patient unfortunately the original growth is not shown in this picture my phone uh, was changed six years ago this this is this is a case six years ago that girl was very little so she had a bilateral invasion of that both sides and as you can see she this is a last week's picture and as you can see it's completely cleared off this side and that side she was taken to a surgeon and surgeon immediately asked to remove the glands through surgery. A patient's party you know, came to my knee for rescue. I saw two months, and within two months, it started shrunk, shrinking, so they stayed with me, and within six to nine months, it's completely went away. I use scrofularia nodosa as an intercurrent in this case. I'll come to that a little later. So scrofularia nodosa as an intercurrent used as a 200C. Otherwise, sisters 30C resolve this case. So now I come to another good remedy, which I experimented a lot, scrofularia nodosa. So I primarily use this as an intercurrent. So the, the glandular growth or the uh, tumor or whatever, invasion is will be rubbery soft it's not like the cystus but what it does this is works like a thuja so it has so much you know anti-myasmatic anti-glandular properties if you team this up with your chosen medicine single dose or few dose as an intercurrent every few months you are will be in a winning winning seat this is my clinical observation so family history of tuberculosis is a very good uh, indication or tubercular dust is of the patient himself. Drowsiness can be a concomitant, but it's not a make or break prescription. I use this as an intercurrent. I use this 200 C. I don't use mother tincture. I tried that, it didn't do anything. My sixth stop is Hecla Lava, so it's primarily for the jawbone cancer. It's another master remedy, extensive clinical data, multiple verification. Anything to do with the jawbone osteosarcoma, you know, you start with LM scale or low scale, slowly, slowly build up, you'll have a very winning situation. It's wonderful remedy, my friends, and our teachers do use this remedy. It's another very reliable remedy. Kandurango, again, those of you know, must know, it's another uh, master remedy. Can you mute yourself, please? So, Kandurango is really mucocutaneous junction CA. Uh, whatever you call it, whatever growth you have it, it will work. But what I have found is equally very effective in esophageal cancer. It's, a, it's probably one of the top, top remedies in esophageal cancer. And also, anything to do with the pyloric duct, you know, whatever is connecting between the esophagus and the stomach. If there is an issue pathology, you could always think about this remedy. So I normally use this in six or 30. You could use LM. I haven't used that much in uh, mother tincture, but 30C I've used on a number of patients and I can validate that it's a wonderful, very useful proven remedy. So our next stop is women's problem, Asterias Rubens. Again, another master remedy, stony hardness of the growth, like conia, calcarea floor, phytolacca. You can, uh, if you catch a patient or get a patient where the patient has the ulcerative stage with fitted discharges and the, all the hallmark indication of astrotia, movements, left-sidedness, uh, all these things, but it also works in the right side. 
So if you get a left-sided or right-sided, don't just stop using it if other symptoms matches. So it is really kind of puja occidental. Patient can be fat, flabby, and they may have some delusion or fixed ideas. They sometimes smell foul smell, stinking smell. So that's a delusion. Maybe that smell, no one is, is actually feeling it. So that's also lean toward the Thuja Occidentalist, mental delusion. So, and the patient may be bodily makeup, fat or flabby. So pain may radiate from down left arm with some numbness. That's the advanced stage of CA. It's a very, very good indication. And auxiliary gland metastasis could develop. Uh, they have, may have weeping disposition, but don't spend too much time on uh, mind symptoms. Potency, low potency, 630 LM scale. A lot of interest in the reliable repertories. So tumor in the ovaries, uh, mammy axillary gland enlarged. Uh, so, you know, cancer axilla, cancer mammy, all these entries, good entries, nightly pain, hardness, left, menses aggravation before. So before menses aggravation, they have a dilution of smell. They have disgust of the body. Uh, they may feel very, very lonely, strange uh, during menopause. If you get that group of patients, they may have the fear of stroke or all other associated fear, but it's not a make or break symptom. But weeping amelioration, if you can get a symptom, that may be a good indication. Our next stop in women remedies is another hallmark remedies, very, very proven remedy hundreds of cases, many, many practitioners use it. I have used it as well. It's a beautiful remedy, phytolacca decantra. Sorry, it's my handwritten notes, I couldn't finish typing. So pains shooting like electric shock. That's the hallmark of phytolacca. Whatever you get, is an arthalgia, is a, a tumor growth, advanced CA, shooting brain, nightly aggravation, gives you a good indication of phytolacca. All these Rastox modalities, damp, you know, weight, cold weather, aggravation. TD patient may feel by better. They may have some bryonia crossover if you're managing the arthritic patient, but generally damp, cold, and night aggravation. I found more uh, interesting is the night aggravation is a hallmark of fight back. Pains appear suddenly, disappear suddenly, can be relevant. Mastitis, if you have a simple type, inflammation of the women's mammary gland, of course, you will get a lot of success in this medicine. You know, cracks and fissures around the nipple, very, very sensitive to touch. Uh, so it's a, one of the most useful remedies in our material medical phytopharmaca. These are not experimental remedies. So, so the potency is 630, 200 and LM scale. <clears throat> so as you can see, the phyto has got a lot of entries in modern repertories, Adonis 2022 version, mammy, cancer, a lot of entries, injury from, you know, accompanied by uh, all this pain, nightly pain. I find nightly pain is a very, very easy to pick. And you can see the cracks around all these things. If you get the ulcerative stages, we have some discharge, um, we have excoriation, and all these you know, top grade symptoms here. So it may be a hardness in their growth, all these entries here, good entries. They may have general inflammation or advanced inflammation. So you can see the multitude of entries in our repertories. Uh, you know. Complain aggravates before menses like conia, lachesis, all these things are coming. The milky discharges, you know, bloody, bloody milky milk discharges, you could think about phytolacca as well. Nodules, even the benign type response in phytolacca. As you can see, all these entries, the old reliable entries, I'm just showing you uh, all these, uh, even the ulceration type. So, 
what it shows the multitude of uh, growth in the women's uh, mammy we can handle with phytoplankton. So 30C, 200C, LM scale, 6C gives very, very good results. So our next stop is uh, another uh, Arthur Hill Dreamers uh, cadmium group of remedies, CADFOS. It's a prostatic cancer, uh, useful in very, very uh, useful in prostatic cancer. Hematuria, you have to have that. You can use this post-surgery to stop the recurrence. And if you're lucky, if your uh, patient trusts you or come to you or even in a rural clinic, if you catch the patient in early days, you could definitely give it a try. Of course, as a maiden cases, you should start with lower potency. But if you are stopping a recurrency, then obviously you need to think higher. It compares with flutamide. It's another uh, experimental medicine. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. It's a very useful remedy in prostate cancer, but you can compare these two remedies. So flutamide is anti-androgenic. It's a thuja constitution remedy. We can use this homeopathically, 30C, 200C in advanced prostate CA patients, along with the cat. So these group of remedies compete each other. Cinnamonum, another very useful remedy for women. Uh, so whatever cancer you name it, genitourinary region. So we all know cinnamonum is our uh, traditional herb. So the wonderful medicine is prepared from there. It's a very, very useful remedy for cervix, uterine, even prostate, bladder. So pain and hemorrhage is the hallmark. Foul smelly, if you get a women's case, uterine CA. If you give mother tincture within a few days, it will settle. Very useful, right? Mostly in women's cases, I've seen excellent results. Creosotum, another very uh, useful uh, hallmark remedies, proven remedies. So what is the creosotum? It is the uh, uh, analogous to phosphorus constitution. You know, they will be tall, thin, chilly, but their whole mark is really foul, fetid, acrid discharges from the mucous membrane. That's the whole mark of this. Yeah, if you get the dark black passive bleeding, that's fine. But if you get foul discharges and the patient is chilly, phosphorus type, don't hesitate. The cervix cancer, endometrial CA, chilliness, yeah. It has to be like the phosphorus constitution. But if you get the physical generals, you can also prescribe it. So it goes within that sort of remit, tall, slender patient with foul fetid discharge. They will tell you, yeah, but you need to ask. We recently dealt with a, uh, uh, a woman's case on our, uh, our group online, Cruz uh, responded very well. Our bleeding discharges, they are smelly. So we're given in potency. So creosotum works in 630, 200, and of course, for advanced cancer patients. Can you mute yourself, please? Right. Now we come to another uh, sphere of action, remedies, organopathics. Hydrastis canadensis is a beautiful remedy. Let me give you a brief on hydrastis. So what hydrastis does, gives rise to cancer diathesis. There is no particular cancer. It's a very broad spectrum remedy, not very widely proven remedy, but it has got huge potential. Pre-cancerous state, post-chemotherapeutic state, that sort of thing. So yellow discharges from the mucous membrane or even the vomit that will uh, draw your attention to, to hydrastis. So empty all gone sensation like phosphorus. Uh, nipples can be retracted in women's cases, but you will find hydrostis in stomach and liver CA. Yeah. You know, a lot of patients will see that sort of situation. Loss of appetite because of the liver involvement, uh, eolish thick, vomiting, uh, you know, all these typical Kelly bite type. Yeah, they will feel worse by eating. Yeah, that's the one of the indications. 
But if you get the general matching, it will work. I have used in the uh, respiratory patients as well. So it's a very broad spectrum remedy. It, it will not solve uh, with the single remedy, you will not be able to solve, but you can modify the case quite well in lower potency. That's how I can vouch for it. So chronic constipation, worse by bread and vegetable can be another concomitant. But yeah, it's a very, very useful remedy. Uh, in a book says that it works well with tuberculina. Our next stop is in this stomach category, ornithogallium, uh, star of Bethlehem is the Cooper's Club remedies. Coffee ground vomiting is the is the one of the characteristics of it. Basically, the patient won't be able to keep anything in their tummy. Everything they vomit out. So it's really stomach and KCAM CA. So distension of abdomen and frequent belching can be a concomitant. It can give in six thirty or even mother tincture. It's also another very useful remedy in advanced CA cases. Our next stop is uh, Chelidonia majus. It's a very well-known remedy. All of us use it. So in order to enter into Chelidonia, we enter through a uh, hot food and drinks desire. Yeah, so that's one of the entry points to this beautiful remedy. You can uh, physically match with tongue. Uh, they feel better by eating. Right-sided is the uh, one of the characteristics uh, you know, all this liver, uh, gall, bladder, all these things. Yellow skin, urine, jaundice, all this another, you know, indication. Uh, it may have in some patients skin ulcer as well, very old patient. Um, but they may have some indication in the stool. So lower low right lung can also be affected. You may get a very immune compromised patient. They have liver pathology as well as the lung, you know, situation going on, low-grade pneumonia, bronchitis. And when you check it, you know, it's a lower low right lung is affected uh, or they, they will confirm they had this pneumonia. Just data will show it was lower low right lung. You can think about this. It's really acute of life the constitution. Uh, I've used this in hepatitis patients as well, but I uh, made this with Thuja. It's a... Um, it's a, there is a cancer institute in the States. They have published a paper. It was many years ago. I forgot in the paper name. From there, I found Thuja and this works for those hepatitis. But for us, today's chat, see a patient, 60, um, you know, all these things. Large amount is actually toxic. So if we give drop dosages, we should be careful. And liver is already weak, so we should be giving very large amount of Chelidonia in Cuba. So these are some of my uh, uh, recent patients. So left hand side, he was an ex-alcoholic. You see tongue is heavily involved, yellow. Right hand side, he was also post-alcoholic. His tongue has a different shade, but both of them responded very well with Thuja. Sorry, uh, Chelidonia. I gave Thuja to this patient because he had extensive uh, hepatitis. Right. <clears throat> Our next stop in this liver category are famous um, cardasmar, milk thistle. So it's really a detoxifier rejuvenator. If you're from the northern part of the world, you see in Europe, you can buy this as a, as a off the shelf, as a supplement. You don't need anything. People use this because of their alcohol abuse, and they know that historically it works, rejuvenates the liver. So pain mostly in the left side is a PQRS. So left liver low affinity. If you go into detail, that's one of the indica good indications. So liver, gallbladder, rectum, CA. And you may have a dropsy. It's a very common thing in this. Or even, you know, diarrhea in the rectum. So I've used all of them, 6, Q, 30. You can buy dry dose in Europe. Even the Cardos Marwell, they sell it. I've, I've also tried them. So for the liver advanced patient, you may actually choose for dry dose because if, you know, if we give very large amount of uh, dilution in mother tincture, 
it may actually uh, harm the patient's liver at the same time. You'll get a lot of patients coming from uh, you know, alcohol abuse. Our next stop in this category is lycopodium. So I'm just showing this in a different format to show how we enter into lycopodium. So a patient is consulting, but uh, we can actually think about their constitution if it's lycopodium. Of course, desire warm food and drinks, 4 to 8 p.m. aggravation, better after midnight, right-sided complaints. If you ask, do you take your own decision? Are you consult with everybody? His family member will say, no, no, sir. He makes all his decisions. He doesn't listen to anybody. So that's a dictatorial attitude. They may desire sweets. They may be very uh, thoughtful about their wallet. Uh, quite often you see they have an intelligence above average. Um, they may have some childhood thing that may give rise to their lack of confidence, but they will not tell you in clinical practice. So they may have performance anxiety. You need to be articulate in asking that. Even the task is very familiar, they may feel very over strong. So that may indicate the life constitution. So it's primary action on liver, kidney, and uh, urogenital, of course. I've used all these vocal seeds, and this remedy works very uh, slowly. If you asking it to give you very quick results in a chronic cases, you'll not get it. So it's a very slow acting remedy, and depending on the pathology, it will never fail. So this is the entry point I have shown you in a chronic lycopodium constitution. You can enter into the case through a few uh, keynotes. Excuse me, I need to get some more. Please. I'd like to introduce another interesting remedy in this uh, presentation. So this is actually a Mexican uh, tree. Uh, these are the Mexican name, uh, Oculalet. So this is the abbreviation of the uh, remedy. And one of the other common names we use, Rajania Sapsamaria. So this is a Mexican name, and it's a, the reason I am introducing this to you, this is also a very uh, useful and promising remedy. I don't have extensive clinical experience, but those master homeopaths uh, and the data I have seen is quite promising. That's why I'm presenting this, uh, and it's available uh, in other parts of the world. So any CA colon dysentery, ulcerative colitis, IBS, uh, your well-selected remedy may not be working very well. You can maybe experimentally explore this remedy. It's a very wide spectrum remedy like uh, hydrastis. So see a colon and the you know, uh, GIT tracks. So all these IBS pathways. So the oral cavity, you can see from the tobacco chewing, uh, extensive uh, buccal cavities, pathology you can think about. Uh, other remedies that are not responding well, you could give it a try and gather some clinical experience. And also CA lungs, it has shown some um, an extensive data is there. So University of Mexico, they run quite a few clinical trials as a, as a heart, not as a homeopathic dilution, but uh, it, is, it is very, very promising. Uh, so the data is gathering now, right, but I should uh, take the opportunity to introduce this potential remedy. So low potencies and LM scale would be appropriate for advanced cancer patients. So I bring another variation to today's chat, our tea occidentalist, our celebrated uh, polycrest anti-myasmatic remedy. I take a lot of constitutional cases, so I thought let's get the off the boredom and show how we actually catch Suja in any, any patient, it doesn't have to be CA. But you'll get a lot of CA patients, they are originally through their constitution. So growth has to be there, any growth, whether it's a tumor, lipoma, 
any growth, you name it, cyst in the past, family history, or present, it will indicate thuja. So chili patient, damp aggravation, they may have desire, aversion, or aggravation. All these three is possible with onions. They have multiple relationship with onions, raw onions. 3 a.m. p.m. aggravation, fat belly, many delicious fixed ideas uh, in childhood. If you don't get an adult, you may ask when you were a small uh, teenager, did you have that? So someone is following. I've seen many adults become far yet. Yeah, at night, I feel that. So it's a delusion. <laughs> so obsessive compulsive disorder may be there, like doing the same thing on and on again. So family and personal history of arthritis, you can enter into Thuja. Family or personal history of asthma, you can enter into another hallmark, the Thuja. So like I said, earlier growth, cyst, worse, sarcoma. So history of uh, hepatitis B or C, I just, I found this is my observation. I thought it should also be there. Bad effects of vaccination, you all know. This dream we have verified in our uh, clinical setup many times, hundreds of times, either dead relatives or someone passed away, they may see, see them. They may have endocrine system, disorder. So these are the satellite remedies of Thuja. I have quite extensively used them, thyroidina, torulize for the pediatric group, and calcarea carbonica. Sometimes they come hand in hand, but it's not a rule. This is just my observation. Potency, low to high potency. Of course, in active cancer, don't go higher. Always start with low or LN scale and slowly, slowly build up. I would like to uh, enter into our next uh, pillar in CA management or polycrest remedies. So before I do that, I will take two minutes break, if that's okay. I'll be back in two minutes. Right, so let's begin now. So one of our hallmarks and most disputed remedy, carcinosin. So I'll not spend a lot of time on carcinosin. I'll just do an overview of how I actually grasp carcinosin, my take on it. And you will know what it means in CA patients. So these are different preparations. So, one of the entry points in carcinosin is past history and family history. So CA in the family, cancer survivors, recurrent cancer, you can think about. So this is a group of thing I, I felt that the past history is quite important. So glandular infections, all these, you know, childhood TB, glandular infections, infectious disease, diphtheria, all these things, you know, can come in to indicate the carcinosis. Very long lasting peptic ulcer, colitis, fistula, recurrent abscess, keloids can also show you carcinosis. So I've grouped the remedies associated remedies we normally think of. Whooping cough, history of whooping cough, pneumonia, repeated sore throat, where we think about 
phosphorus, bacillinum, streptococcinum, pneumococcinum, carcinogen may also be part of. Measles, malaria, so all these infectious diseases. So HPV virus, Epstein Barr virus, Kaposi's sarcoma, you see all these things is one pathway to carcinosis. That means when you prescribe carcinosis, it doesn't have to be cancer. If you are in a consulting room, you see a patient with a lot of history of this listed here, you can think about carcinosis. Again, this continues the blood disorder, thalassemia, sickle cell, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, right, is spondylosis, all this thing where we think about all these traditional remedies, multiple allergies, insanities, multiple vaccinations. You can also think about carcinogens. Absence of fever and uh, my screen, just give me a second. So carcinosis second entry point is fever or infections. So, I've covered the first entry point, past history, family history. I've entered the second entry point into carcinosis. So you can independently enter into the first, enter into carcinosis prescription through the first pathway, or you get the second pathway or combination of both. So absence of fever for very long time is also a good indication of carcinosis. As per the Vita Lucas scale, these patients are in a very low vitality. That means they have so many suppressions, their body has gone into a very, very suppressive, depressive state, cancerous state. If you ask your patient, when was the last time you had a high fever, they will tell, oh, Dr. I don't remember. You should suspect if other indication matches. Okay. Or the other spectrum is recurrent fever, too many times. Uh, Pyrexia of unknown origin, doctors are struggling. You should also suspect. Isn't it sickle cell type, or thalassemia type? You should suspect. Even without any advanced investi investigation, you should suspect. So third entry point is sleep. It's a very well-known entry point into carcinosis. You can enter into case loss of sleep. Long history of insomnia. Problem with sleep, they will tell you. That's the another genuine entry point. Fourth is physical signs and symptoms. You all know many moles here and there, blue sclera, leukoplakia, cafe au lait, pigmentation. All these you know. That's the fourth group of entry points. And the fifth entry point, congenital disorders. Uh, these are a group of symptoms. I don't have any specialization in those. But if you see in your patient that these advanced congenital things are there, then you can suspect carcinosis or give it a try. Right, this is interesting. Sixth entry point, many symptoms. Like I said at the beginning, it's a mixture of many polycrests. So you take a case properly, you spend good time with your client, and you're very confident in your observation, and suddenly you see, oh, three, four polycrests are indicated. What shall I do? In those sort of situations, you can also open your prescription with carcinogens, where too many competing remedies are showing up. The patient have the tarantula, sepia, uh, love for nature, you know, love for animals, very sympathetic, you name it. Now, the seventh entry point is a controversial mental etiologies. I don't prescribe only on mental symptoms. So all these things are valid symptoms, very useful symptoms. They're very fastidious. Um, they're very, uh, you know, into intellectual thing. Very, very sympathetic, more than caustic and phosphorus. Perfection is, you know, fastidious. They may have a very high degree of anticipatory anxiety. All this physical... Uh, you know, group of, sorry, mental group of symptoms can also indicate you to carcinogens. Now, I have shown you seven routes to carcinogens. Do we need all these seven routes to prescribe carcinogens? We can prescribe on only mental pathway. 
you can prescribe on the only on the absence of fever or other few physical signs and symptoms, multiple infection, another one. Now, based on this discussion, now we see carcinogen is no wonder a lot of our body homeopaths they they uh, get scared because the way the material comes in front of us is very daunting. But when you study this wonderful medicine uh, in this way, I'm sure uh, not only active CA or past history of CA, you, you will understand carcinogen very well. So these are the generals of carcinogen. Full moon, new moon aggravation, I have observed this. Um, you know, some authors said between one to six, six to seven. But uh, like other no sorts, carcinogen came into clinical practice, through the clinical practice. There's no exact proving of carcinogen. So these are not make or break thing. You know, but these are some good indications. But what I have found, the childhood disease appear in the adults. That's what I have clinically observed. That's a PQRS in my opinion. So these are the cognates I already uh, discussed. Ignatia, natremure, disappointment, grief, all this mental pathway, X-ray, radium, bomb, sulfur pathway, uh, staphysegria, you know, all these dis disappointments. Phosphorus causticum pathway. There are many, many polycrest pathways. These are the associated remedies. I'll not spend too much time on it because it's a very broad subject. These are the supporting rubrics taken from the modern repertories. As you can see, all of these I discussed, they have entry point confirmed by multiple authors. As you can see, in complete repertory, there is a so many rubrics in sleeplessness. So sleep, you cannot ignore. Yeah. Ailments from is a huge, huge blood disorder. Like I said, the hereditary uh, congenital. These are the single rubrics, sleepless hereditary. I've seen many patients, they say, oh, I can't get sleep. What is the reason? No reason. That's hereditary. Or he himself doesn't sleep. That's a good indication. Now, I enter now enter into how we actually manage the cancer patients in pneumopathy and what to expect and what not to expect. Now, if you are a responsible prescriber, just any patient comes to us and I say, okay, I'll give you a single medicine and you'll be okay. If you can do that, you're a magician. But the patients we see in our clinics, uh, it's not simple patients. They don't come in stage one. By the time it gets diagnosed, by the time a patient become aware, fund became available, test became uh, you know, available, and it's too late. Some of the cancers, astrocytoma, develops in a few months. You know, just patients, they don't get much time of it. So it's a big responsibility as a homeopath in order for us to make the changes uh, into the broader medical community. If you want to prove our work, we need to take the approach I have shown you in the first part of this lecture, which I covered to organopathics, to pain management, ulcer management, uh, all these things I have shown you, vomiting management, fibrosis management. So, and I've also showed you some of the cases response if the stage is really, really low. So within the stage one or even two A, you could actually take pure on homeopathy. It will depend on your clinical experience. It will depend on your command over materia medica, observation skill, a lot of these things. So if we can team up with the local oncologist, oncologist friend, that would be great. Um, so stage one is a different approach. But before I go there, let's say I have taken a stage one patient and it's a breast CA stage one confirmed by the oncologist. So I have promised maybe that that girl is part of my extended family and I promised them, oh, with my phytoloca, it will go away. So that's a big claim, right? So how do we actually know my medicine is working? Because I'm racing against time. So these are the modern tests in you know, all this CA15-3, all this marker gene mutation. 
you can actually cancer antigen test done for this specific thing. Normally, I'll come to the management a little later. Within a few weeks after phytolaca, if you don't see good results, you should release the case either to a senior homeopath, that's what I would do, or refer him or her to an oncologist. So all these markers are available. Not every cancer has these markers, but there are quite a few, especially for women's, you can see quite a few. You can take them. If the patient can afford it every month, if you see the first month prescription patient is his antigen before and after is quite significant, it's not just a fluke, then you know you are on the right track. But if you don't see any changes, don't hesitate to change the medicine. It also works in your favor. So this is a little trick I give you. Don't forget this, huh? So second stop is diet and exercise. So as you know, cancer may be lifestyle factors. So without diet and exercise, uh, if the patient is able, right? Patient has to be able. We can't expect total success, but that doesn't mean every diet is prohibited, no. Because that will create unnecessary stress itself. So sugar is, is a bigger, big one because cancer cell thrives on sugar. So we should really cut down sugar, ask them to cut down. Green leafy, leafy vegetable we do, alcohol, tobacco, I don't have to say much about it. If they can do light exercise, that's well and good. Some of the cancer, they can't do it. But pranayama, meditation, or their prayer, whoever they are, would definitely quieten their mind. Now, that's very important because one of the etiologies is the stress and mental well-being in cancer. So now I enter into the practical um, cancer management. Uh, one of the things you will see, the patients has come to you. Patients have come to you. Oh, doctor, I have done um, one breast removal. I have seen this many times. But I fear there is another one might come on the next. Can you do something about it? Or the growth is coming back. Doctors removed twice. The third time he's coming and she's coming and begging you. Can you do something about it? Yes, we can do something about it. So first of all, you need to fill out the consent form because you're involved into, uh, with an oncologist. So what we can do, if the PET CT scan has shown there is no residue, we can safely give a single dose of carcinosin, 1M. If you're scared of 1M or you don't have enough clinical experience, you can start with 200. But don't give on full moon day. Huh? It's a practical thing. So this is one of the ways to open the case. So how long should you wait? You should wait very long. Do not repeat carcinosin. Let it act over time. And if you know the constitutional remedy of that patient, maybe that lady was actually natremure. Through the natremure pathway, she entered into carcinosin or the end results of that malignancy. So if you know that end results is removed and you give a single dose of carcinosin, you could put her back on maybe natremure LM0 by 2 after a month. So in this way, you can slowly, gently, you know, bring this lady, put this lady away from the death jaw because the another one quite often, it develops after the right breast left, even the same place, two, three times, you know, you'll see. So this is another good way of um, homeopathic score. This is where we can prove ourselves that yes, homeopathy has a lot of answer. This is actually a good opportunity for us. So stage one is a virgin case. The person didn't go, uh, imagine the same lady, she didn't go to an oncologist or surgeon. It's a virgin case, stage one. So again, you know the organ-specific remedy, maybe it matches with phytolacca, nightly aggravation, uh, electric-like shock, go to accident. Why not phytolacca, 30C, LM0 by 2? You give, and uh, within a few um, weeks, you monitor with your uh, CA marker and you see, she will say, oh, doctor, my pain is gone. The night, the pain, yeah, less intensity now. I feel less pain. Within a week, they will tell you if it's stage one. And this is the, this is the, uh, this is the group of patients where homeopathy can shine. I'll show one of my cases 
were actually proved that this, this works beautifully. But unfortunately, if you are in an urban setup, you don't see many patients. People with money and budget, they will uh, not delay one minute with, with us. But if you get uh, someone who is very reluctant to surgery, they're still looking for opportunity, ask for a, a month or two max and give it a try. I have seen in this type of case that carcinogen in 30C potency can be used as an intercurrent even though it's an active. What I've seen after a few months of organopathics, when the patient is almost 60% gone, 50% problem, settled, pain settled, growth is shrinking, I introduced carcinocin and I have seen good results, especially in the women's cases. You could also give it a try. A lot of practitioners, they are against carcinogen in active thing, but this is my experience I'm sharing your mileage will vary, but I given only 30 C in stage one and it modified the case beautifully, very quickly. But I didn't give on day one. Now stage two, three and four cases, uh, uh, cancer cases. I had three, four liver uh, CA stage four. They, they spent three years, two years here and there. In a very last stage referred by friend, just before the death they came. I told them that there is nothing, nobody. Only God can do something, we can't do anything. About it. They will not you know, listen, they said, doctor, do something, it's begging him. He do something and the patient goes out of it. It's a very bad experience. So don't go for stage four and promise those things. So in stage two onwards, I would say stage two B onwards, you should work with oncologists very carefully. Fill out the consent form. And if you think, the tumor is so large, the product is so large, our light medicine cannot handle the fire, the growth, then you should first refer to a surgeon. Oh, go for a surgery, take a chemo if needed, then come back, I'll give you medicine to stop recurrence. That's a very mature approach because we all wanna be a hero and we wanna our name and fame for homeopathy. But life has its own language, body has its own language. Healing is an art. It has its own dynamics. So it should not be compromising the patient's life by saying, uh, oh, I can do anything with this stage three. No, it's not that simple. Maybe you have done only two, three cases. If you had done, I had done hundreds of cases, I would have seen there are many failures. We don't like to talk about failures, but imagine the person who are involved. We should not take any chances with their life. So if they come back with, uh, from the surgeon, you already know, I have already presented the first part of the presentation. What are the orthopathics? How to manage chemo? How to manage pain? How to manage wound? I've already discussed that. Manage in that way. And once the patient settle, give carcinosis to recurrency or indicated constitutional remedy, low dilution, so that the patient regains his or her vitality quite easily. So this is what I think my humble opinion is the mature way of handling CA patients in this complex world. Now, <clears throat> this almost concludes the strategy bit. I have very simplified it. I could have spoken another few hours, but the uh, clock is ticking. The, another avenue, which is experimental, uh, but we have seen some good data is a CA vaccination. You have seen one of the entry path in carcinosin is family history. You see a patient at the age of 15 or 18 and somebody in your extended family, a lot of his family members are getting cancers. Active family, close family members like brothers, uncles, close uncles, mom, dad, grandparents. So the theory goes, the hypothesis goes, if you give carcinosin 1M, single dose annual for a few years, very likely that person will not develop CA in early. Maybe even if he develops, maybe it will be very delayed. These are all hypotheses. Only few hundred pay, pay, few hundred participants receive those doses. They're still completing their lifelong. One of my great teachers here is actually experimented that we so data is still building up, but I believe is one of the proactive measures where we can actually think about. Uh, carcinosins 
judicial use. This is now I present a case uh, where these theories are actually applied in practice. It's a male age 45, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance on the right shoulder. He had all this hallmark of carcinosis in unhappy personal life. Uh, few remedies were tried, but nothing worked. So advice surgery. So in this case, immediately he falls into organ sacrifice category. So what we aim for for this patient now, stop recurrence, because there's no guarantee that this will not come back. And the patient's oncologist said, surgeon said that actually there are some residual things. Histopathology data shows that. So the case was taken for surgery and carcinosin 1M was given based on family makeup. So there is a uh, mental makeup, family history, and the antipsychotic, all this medicine was applied. I'm going to show you the picture in a minute. And as of 2022, the patient is doing fine. And the last test was done. The oncologist gave it clear there is no residual. So this is the fibrosarcoma protuberance. On the left-hand side, it was before the surgery. As you can see, it's infiltrating. So the surgeon did a very wide excision of his uh, right shoulder. It was reconstructed. So histopathology showed uh, probably here there is some cell remaining, but as of uh, two and a half years follow-up, they're now saying, no, it's nothing to be worried about because there is no sign of retard. So the carcinocin was given within uh, two months of surgery. Carcinocin 1M was given to this patient. And also he was given uh, antipsychotic remedy. So this shows the, how homeopathy can coexist with uh, surgeons, surgery. Case number two, uh, again, this is a case type one, category one, where the maiden case was detected, 24-year-old female, uh, fibroadenoma, the, the local physician, allopathic physician, he suspected malignancy, Patient's party didn't have enough money to, to do extensive. And it was a very old case, almost like 2014. Um, I didn't have enough extensive paper there, but it was one of my relatives' case. So <clears throat> Phytoloca was chosen based on these uh, modalities, electric light pain, shooting pain, nightly aggravation. So she was given Phytoloca, and I still recall her uh, her. Uh, feedback after two, she, she literally said my pain 70% gone in three days. I still remember that. So calc floor sixes was given uh, biochemic dilution. Those days I did have many cancer patients. This was an experimental case I took on my own because of my uh, extended family members. I also given him conaya, um, you know, because after uh, phyto, the tumors, or not shrunk anymore. It's quite a large uh, growth now, very painful. So one of the things I noted in her, she was losing her weight every week. She was originally 57 and she went down to 37. But after Phytolaka, I noted that she went back to 42, which is a good sign because when cancer metabolism takes over our body, then you know all this havoc happens. It will become cachexic. So it's a very good sign. And I also introduced carcinosin in this case, um, you know, along with the conium. Those days, believe me, I didn't have enough uh, data to, to trust them. So this was something I was experimenting. Um, but the good news is the lump completely dissolved in nine months' time. I, I did a follow-up with her. Uh, there is no sign of that to be retired since 2013. Uh, she put on weight. This is one of the uh, tests they did in um, Chennai and they, they said there is no, everything looks normal. So these two cases I present in two different spectrum. As you can see, there's no big claim, but something is doable, something is possible. If I have done it, I'm sure you can do the same. 
So summary for uh, today's lecture, uh, I'm almost end of my presentation. So vaccination, which I said that is a very, very uh, new approach. Um, one of the routes, you could, it's an experimental approach. I'm not saying you should do to everybody, uh, but this is a something we should be looking ahead, um, even in our extended family. The second category where all organic sacrifice we discussed today, we take the approach of stop recurrency. We give one M and we check up regularly. We avoid full moon new. So in cases of, uh, this is something I'm introducing here. Uh, we can actually think about specific carcinogen preparation. For example, a lung cancer, uh, in order to stop the recurrency, it may be prudent to give carcinosin lung rather than generic carcinosin to stop the recurrence. These are some of the clinical observations. You don't have to do that, but uh, there's some very good data that shows this is the case. And of course, the constitutional remedy, I've also showed you some of the keynotes, how I did constitutional remedies along with my case taking form. So you can go with that approach as well. You may find one or two cases in your career where nothing is responding. So what I've seen is a beautiful case done by one of our master homeopaths. He actually took the tissue sample of the grove and asked the local pharmacy to potentize it, made it 30, 200. And that patient responded to that own cancer cell potentized medicine. So I've also summarized it here. That can be another uh, good way of looking at it. You can think about 50 millisimal scale here if you are if you are worried about centesimal, if you're not comfortable with centesimal. We discussed organ specific remedies, um, which we uh, already expanded quite a bit. We also tossed upon constitutional remedy, but we saying here it should not be given in an active CA. Let's say I get a natural new patient. Um, the constitution is natural new, the patient has advanced CA, mammy. Shall I give natural new 1M, 10M? No. <laughs> the patient's vitality is all gone. Something else taken over their body. You should not. We should give organ specific remedy first to quieten the fire, to prepare the patient, maybe six months in the program when all the markers are showing, all regressing. Maybe you can introduce natrium in LM potency, but don't try to suddenly think, oh, everywhere constitution should work, so my constitutional remedy should get this patient out of the death zone. No, it doesn't work like that. It's too late. Cancer is a very advanced pathology. So we need to prepare the patient, raise the vitality. Now, another thing, anti metastasis thing, so quite often you will see patients coming, um, see liver is actually secondary to some, or, you know, see liver, see lung, along with the bone metastasis. You will find a lot of patients like this. So what do we do? One of the well-kept secrets, uh, our, uh, our great teachers, they, they help us with is the uh, germanium you can give in some of those cases. Um, also melandrinum. Um, you can try in higher potency. Again, this is something very hard for the advanced practitioner, those of you very senior, they you already know that. Uh, there are a few other suggestions, but germanium and melandrinum clinically verified. Now, this CA antigen test shall be done. I already uh, spoke about it because I feel uh, if I'm not sure it's not working, if I'm sure that my patient is not responding, I have no, at least I, this is how I think, I have no right to experiment with this patient where my colleague, maybe my teacher can easily handle that patient and save that person's life. So, yeah. So this is what I'm saying in the last point, but before I go there, so all this test I already uh, discussed in previous slide that how well we can monitor, not every CA, but there are, Quite a few CA tests are available if the patient can afford it. And if it's not very, uh, you know, it's in a very aggressive type, I think we should monitor 
even if we are very confident. And lastly, as we just said that uh, uh, if I cannot show anything improvement in four to six, this is what I think that uh, we should discharge the patient and tell him or her, please see my teacher or another senior physician in the town or see the modern medicine. So I have seen many times patient uh, been dealt by another homeopaths or colleagues and uh, it was delayed by a year. By that time, it spread it like fire and the next physician had no chance. So we should all be uh, praying for our patients and ourselves that we, we do better healing with sense and sensibility and thoughtfulness. Um, that's all for tonight, please. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Now the session is open for doubts. Sir, there is there are a few questions in the chat box, sir. One question yes. is, you have suggested to avoid full moon and new moon in the post-surgical cases. Is there any logical point behind that? Yeah, carcinocin has a clinical observation that a lot of um, moon cycle aggravation. The logical cycle is, if you observe a number of patients, you'll see that during especially full moon, our body, um, you know, hygroscopic component, the water content changes, the inflammatory process get accelerated. Not for a general public, but the person who is actually uh, cancer diastasis. I have observed that. Uh, their body influence. They say, oh, sir, those days I have noted that my burning is more. Yeah, this is a clinical observation. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I'm sorry, doctor, my internet got disconnected. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now, please? Yes, sir, you're audible now. Yeah, so it's something like clinical experience that uh, is wise to avoid full moon and new. You can experiment with this. This is something I recommend. Even the polycrest, some of the uh, deep acting polycrest, we shouldn't be giving um, during full moon. Try to avoid that if possible. Any any further questions, please? Yes, sir. Please, can you please throw some light on repetition of 6, 30, 201 impotencies, sir? Yeah. So uh, in active uh, or post-surgical CA, whatever we get, if the low potency, I repeat often, Let's say I'm doing 6C, is almost like mother teacher. So I would be probably giving three to four times a day for the first few weeks. Because I, I'm racing against time. 
if the patient's vitality is okay, not great, it's a very low potency, I repeat, in water dose. So what I do, I take a bottle, 200 ml bottle, I probably put a few pills or one drop. And from there, after the shaking, I give either a teaspoon or a small sip. So each teaspoon or one sip will be single dose. So that bottle will last maybe for a week, for example. But I've given only a few, uh, few pills in there or one single drop. So it's a split dose. So I give four to five times when I need to race against time. But if the potency is like 30, I will probably give maximum twice a day. Uh, and 200, of course, I don't repeat uh, very often. And one M, like I said, uh, if the acute pain, like uh, let's say tarantula even this patient is dying, I'll be repeating every 10 minutes until the patient settles down in pain. Because here I need to save person's life. The person is dying, even morphine is not working. So we should be careful. So split dose, water dose, until the patient settles one M in very severe painful conditions. But if you get a cancer patient where you are actually repairing him or her or managing, no, 1M should not be repeated like that. Like if you give carcinosin, you'll be giving maybe every three months, every four months, uh, maybe even a year. Uh, but if you are giving like organopathics, like I said, 6C, 30C, you can repeat quite often in a split dose. Any further question, please? Thank you, sir. One, another last question, sir. Is euthanasia possible with homeo in ter terminal stages? Yes, I mean, if, you, if I give a higher potency in arsenic, let's say 10 m, I never use arsenic by above 200. Most of my uh, clinical experience is within 200 LM potency. I manage advanced patients, so I come from very acute management of patients, like OPD type setup. Um, I never give higher potency of arsenic because it can actually. Uh, do that but you need to be like 10 m and every patient will not go into that state but yeah it's a very high possibility when a patient is dying tarantula kibensis anthracinam if for me now see excruciating pain nothing is working patient is already half dead you need to be very uh, start with 200 if you if you're not comfortable with potency i'm very comfortable with potency uh, it gains, uh, it comes from the experience. I use low, medium, high. It depends on my case. If I, if I, my objective is to save the patient's life, I'll not hesitate, even high potency, I repeat it, but I need to be there. Now. So it all depends on your experience. Next question, please. Thank you, sir. Now I request president of our association, Dr. K. Gopal Krishna, sir, to please say a few words about the oration. Yeah. Your talk was very informative and knowledgeable. We have gained a lot of information in regards to many of the experiences required. So we profusely, profusely thank you, Dr. Atikul Alam, for your very informative talk. And the topic is dealt very methodically, though it was elaborate. So very comprehensive, every aspect required is touched and given enough detail. So we once again profusely thank you. And so do you have any experience of using Viscom album in cancers? Yeah, your experience, please. No, sir, I, I have not. Uh tried Viscom album yet. I'm sorry, sir, I have not used it yet. Yeah, the mention of carcinosin has given us a lot of confidence to try and use it. 
So we profusely thank you one again, once again. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I request Dr. Annapurna to say a few words and conclude the session. Myself, Dr. Annapurna Mantha, I take the honor to offer a vote of thanks for today's oration. Uh, I extend my warm thanks particularly to Dr. B.K. Kumar Memorial Oration Sponsors and their family members. We also extend our thanks to Mrs. Ananda Gauri and Sri Ramachandra Garu for which they have conveyed their wishes to our association. And I would also like to thank our president, Dr. K. Gopal Krishna, sir, our general secretary, Dr. Durga Prasad Rao, sir, president emeritus and advisor, Dr. Sampat Rao, sir, and Venu Gopal Gauri, sir, for directing us and arranging this webinar for us. And last but not the least, I would like to thank all our dignitaries and all our guests who are present over here online as well as offline. Thank you so much. Thank you.